Has played a little bit. What a pass by Rondo. That might be the Tiger. Why not? Why can't I be the MVP of the league? Why can't I be the best player in the league? The Lakers repeat back to back titles. The LA Lakers, the 2010 NBA champions. What's up NBA fans, Dom2K on the mic, and just a quick reminder before the start of this video, be sure to check out today's sponsor, CatBeast.com. Using the link in both the comment section and the description, you can check out their website and design your own custom hats. Speaking of which, there were a lot of custom hats handed out to a lot of great first overall picks throughout the 2010s. Usually in draft retrospectives, we're looking back and asking what went wrong. Literally all of these players were somebody before they were drafted to the league, they'd won some award, they'd been the best player on some team, especially if they were a high pick, and so that immediately creates an image that's very hard to live up to in a professional league. However, looking at the first overall picks, teams have gotten it right more times than they haven't, and so I figured that would create a competitive ranking list, and today we are going to rank the number one picks in the 2010s NBA drafts, except of course for Zion Williamson. As much as I stand and I think he's going to be great, he has barely touched the floor yet, so this is going to be a ranking of 9 players. With the first pick in the 2013 NBA Draft, the Cleveland Cavaliers select Anthony Bennett Whoa. of Toronto, Canada and the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. I'm sorry, okay, if Anthony Bennett ever just so happens to see this video, I'm not ragging on you as a person. It's just hilarious after that whole spiel I gave about great number one picks that Anthony Bennett comes up right afterwards. Anyways, look, no matter how you slice it, Anthony Bennett was definitely a bust, but I just want to remind people and I want it to be documented here that Bennett was not a projected first overall pick. So that's different, right? Because a lot of the players on this list you're going to see, it was kind of like a no brainer. These were the first picks. Whereas if you go look at the draft projection, for 2013 that still exists they're still on the internet from when people wrote them in the moment you see Bennett going like four seven which again is still that still makes him a bust because that's a top 10 pick and he turned out not even being in the league after a couple of years so definitely a bust but even think back to Bill Simmons reaction nobody really knew he was going first overall nobody thought the Cleveland Cavaliers were selecting Anthony Bennett they were looking at guys like Alex Lynn Ben McLemore and so I remember watching 2013 draft night and this this is the only pick I can say throughout the 2010s that went first overall that I was genuinely shocked about. It was the only exciting first overall pick because you didn't see it coming. Now with all that being said, as a top 10 pick his career has been miserable so far. He's played for 4 different teams and actually now 5 because many of you may not even know he signed a non guaranteed contract with the Houston Rockets this summer. I assume he's still going to be trying to actually make the team. There's no guarantee we're actually going to see him appear on the court this year but he's had some promising stints in the G League which is the reason why he's still hovering around the NBA and not just, you know, he hasn't totally disappeared. And you would expect that he would have by now. He's never averaged over 5 points or 4 rebounds, the most games he's played in a season of 57, he's only started 4 games in his career. But still, give him credit. Again, he was drafted in 2013 and with a career this poor, he could have just quit basketball altogether by now. The fact that there's even a chance we're going to see him on the court throughout the 2020s, and this is with him not having played a game since 2017. Hey, there's a level of fight there. Never Nevertheless, he is the only first overall pick on this list that is currently fighting for an NBA job, therefore he has to go number 9 and there's just really no debate about it. With the first pick in the 2017 NBA Draft, the Philadelphia 76ers select Markel Fultz from the University of Washington. the absolutely mysterious career of Markel Fultz. This was a pick that I questioned ever since the day it happened. And not because he didn't have obvious talent, but I just didn't know why the Philadelphia 76ers were drafting a 6'4 guard to play next to Ben Simmons because it was obvious that Simmons was going to be the point guard. I don't know, I've just never been a fan of smaller shooting guards. Like even when you talk about Dwayne Wade being 6'4, he was still weighing around 220 pounds, so he carried it differently. Markel Fultz is around 200 flat, and he made more sense as a point guard. To me. Now that being said, it never even mattered because 
Fultz has only played 33 professional basketball games in two years, and to this day, I have no clue what's going on. Like, you're not going to get an answer in this video. You can skip this part of the video if you want information on Fultz. If you want information on what has happened, if you want a full explanation, skip this. I don't know. As far as I'm concerned, none of his stats are relevant so far. The 40% shooting, the points per game, just none of it's really relevant to me because he hasn't really had a fair shot to show what he's made of yet. Whatever happened with his shot and him not being able to shoot the way he did in college, and I'm talking about the actual form. Whatever happened with his shoulder, it has completely wrecked him. Up to this point, right? I'm not saying this like we're just giving up on Fultz because it's only been two years, he now plays for the Orlando Magic, and the Magic actually picked up his contract option, so he's still got some time to show what he can do. They also released a hype video for him on Twitter, which I'm not really sure that's a great idea considering what's happened over the last few years and the pressure that may put on him. I mean, being a former first overall pick, he feels the pressure regardless. Anyways, all that aside, I am rooting for Fultz because it must be very mentally damaging to have been so great in college, then to come to the league and have some injury that really just, first of all, it's very difficult to even explain. It doesn't seem to have any actual, like, you can't physically see what's wrong other than the fact that his form is so different. And we're just kind of left dumbfounded, so... Yeah, with a 33 game sample in two years, there's nothing we can really say other than the fact that he is number eight overall. And yes, he does place over Bennett because so far with Fultz, it's just been this ailment. From Bennett, what we saw is that he just could not play in the professional league. With the first pick in the 2014 NBA draft, the Cleveland Cavaliers select Andrew Wiggins from Toronto and the University of Kansas. Ah, yes, Wiggins. At number seven, right above the two people who we never really even got to see much of. Well, at least Wiggins showed us a flash, right? By his third season in the league, he was showing development. He was showing progress. You could see it trending the way a first overall pick should trend. And then since then, it's gone down. The efficiency looks crazy, the progress, and it's just the craziest thing because his extension kicked in this season. He went from making $7 million to $25 million, and it's going to keep rising. It's going to keep rising until 2023 when he is owed 33 million. Unless his progress does a 360 at this point, I do not think he is going to match the dollar sign that says franchise cornerstone. And it's a shame because he was the first overall pick, he's now being paid like the first overall pick, and he's being paid like the player who is supposed to be the other superstar next to Carl Anthony Towns. So if you look at things going into the year 2020, the Timberwolves should not be being looked at as a team that just has Carl Anthony Towns and no apparent future path forward. It should be a dynamic duo. Yet, out of all the first overall picks on this list, he is the only one that showed the proper progress that you would expect and then just suddenly regressed. And as you know from a previous video, he did even win Rookie of the Year, so at this point, this is really looking like a Tyreek Evans situation. The first pick in the 2018 NBA Draft, the Phoenix Suns select DeAndre Ayton. Number six is the perfect spot for DeAndre Ayton. He's only had one year to show us what he's made of, and yet I am pretty confident and I feel pretty good about putting him in front of Wiggins, Fultz, and Bennett. Here's the thing with Ayton, right? This is a seven foot one, 250 pound center that does not shoot threes as of right now. Yet he still has an amazing combination of strength, athleticism, and speed. So he's clearly going to be presenting problems for teams down low in terms of matchups. And what I mean is you can't use his size against him in the modern NBA because normally you think of a big guy like this, especially if he is not a great shooter from outside, you're questioning his effectiveness. Yet, because of his speed, a lot of teams that are trending with modern basketball aren't going to have great matchups for him. So it's nothing like Greg Monroe, who was quite effective at the beginning of the decade, then as basketball changed, he kind of fell out because of his size and the fact that he wasn't all that quick. Aiden's not going to have that problem. He had an underrated rookie season. He was already averaging a double-double, 16 and 10, and it was underrated for a couple of reasons. Of course, you have Trey Young and Luka. Both had great rookie years. Luka had one of the best ever. Those are flashier players, and it does not help that Aiden was playing on one of the worst teams in the league last season. Yet, his performance was still impressive despite not having a legitimate point guard to feed him the ball. Which is why you saw Phoenix fans just absolutely praying that they could get their hands on Ja Morant. So, the bottom line is, he had an impressive first year. Let's see where he goes. For right now, he definitely does not get in the top five, but in the future, he might be one of the better first overall all picks throughout this decade. With the first 
first pick in the 2010 NBA draft, the Washington Wizards select John Wall from the University of Kentucky. Oh man, John Wall. You know, with his injury history combined with the torn Achilles, I hate to be talking about him like his career is over, but I think it's nowhere but downhill from here. A point guard that relied heavily on his quickness and athleticism, I just don't see a lot of ways around a torn Achilles for him. Yet throughout the decade, I would say he reached a lot of his potential. At times, around like the 2017 season, you were arguing him as one of the better point guards in the league. I doubt you would have ever called him the best, but he was up there. I just don't ever think we saw his full extent because the jump shot was never amazing, and also he was never surrounded by a great team, let's be real. His best teammate the whole time he was there has been Bradley Beal. The team has never really been complete, and it's just never really been a contending roster. So Wall was nice, he had a good run, but as it stands, he'll mostly just be known as that point guard that was really good one time for the Wizards and not much else. With the first pick, in the 2016 NBA Draft, the Philadelphia 76ers select Ben Simmons from Melbourne, Australia and Louisiana State University. Old Benny Boy. I truly believe that if he had a jump shot, he would have a championship. I think the Sixers could have been the 2019 champions. The team was talented enough. He's certainly very talented. It's just going to be interesting to see how long he excels at the point guard position without anything resembling a respectable jumper. That being said, it does get blown out of proportion because... <laughs> As of yesterday, when you typed in Ben Simmons, the first thing that comes up is Ben Simmons' three-pointer. That's what people want to know, where are your threes, Ben? Yet, I think that overshadows everything else he's good at. Like, on the basketball court as a point guard, he does everything besides shoot. He's great in transition, he's huge which is a matchup problem for teams, he has great court vision, he throws some of the more beautiful passes we've seen, he can rebound, he can still score a lot of the times without being able to shoot, of course that gets more difficult as you get deeper into the playoffs, but my point is, the only thing that's really separating him from like a ward of success is that jumper, and he's only in his third year, he's coming into his third year. So far in his two seasons in the league, he's already flirting with a triple double average, and it's not just empty stats, his team wins more with him. They've been a 50 win team ever since throwing him into the fold with Joel Embiid and this is after spending most of the decade hovering around like 20s and maybe 30 sometimes. He's already an all-star, he's been the rookie of the year. The only reason he wasn't an all-star in 2018 is probably because he was a rookie. Like just think about it, out of every name that's on this list, Simmons is the only one that's come in straight to his team and turned it into a winning culture. And of course he's the only guy who's had Joel Embiid on his team as well but I feel confident in saying the Sixers would be nowhere near as good without Ben Simmons as they are with him. So if you're a Sixers fan, you feel very good about this pick. He is just a jump shot away from being elite. He is just a jump shot away from the Sixers having massive success. So of course, if that jumper never comes in the future and the Sixers continue to get like right there, get very close, but they're always affected in the playoffs by his lack of space creation, then maybe the conversation goes a little differently. But right now with just a two year sample, I'm very big on Ben Simmons. Watch him and pay attention to the game. Don't just get stuck on these three pointers. With the first pick in the 2015 NBA Draft, the Minnesota Timberwolves select Carl Anthony Towns from the University of Kentucky. Carl Anthony Towns is not lacking much other than a good team and a franchise with a clear direction. The man was averaging 25 and 12 in his second season in the NBA. He's fairly consistent so far, and he is right in tune with the evolution of the big man throughout the 2010s. Good rim protector, can shoot from basically anywhere, has post moves, and he's just now going into his fifth year. The day that Towns is matched with another legitimate superstar, the NBA will have been done a solid, but I fear that we are going to go to like the sixth or the seventh year, and he's just going to have amazing stats on a Minnesota team that's not really going places. Nevertheless, throughout the 2010s as an individual player, it takes some very very special reasoning to have a pick ranked in front of him. With the first pick in the 2011 NBA Draft, the Cleveland Cavaliers select Kyrie Irving from Duke University. 
I have Kyrie ranked number two, not because he is the only player on this list with NBA Finals appearances and an NBA title, but because out of all the players on this list, he is the only one with legitimate playoff juice. People talk about playoff performances, and that's one of the only knocks on Cat so far is that he came into that Rocket series and he was looking mad questionable. Kyrie came into his first playoff series looking like he'd been in the playoffs for years before that. He came into his first NBA Finals game, and if you remember, before he shattered his kneecap, he again looked like he had already been there for years. He had 23 points, 6 assists, 4 steals, and was being a great 1B to LeBron's 1A. The 2016 Finals. He comes in with LeBron James and again, 1B. Has 40 points right there with him to stave off elimination in Game 5. Goes on in Game 7 to hit not only the biggest shot in franchise history, but the probably second biggest shot in NBA Finals history. People claim that the tale of a truly great player is when he's on a great team and he is still allowed to be great. He still finds a way to be great. Kyrie Irving while he was a part of the Cavaliers was not just along for the ride with LeBron James. He was the second most important piece right next to LeBron James. And all of this was foreshadowed. Back when he played with the Cavaliers when they were still a sorry team, he still had the clutch gene. They didn't win a lot of games, but when they needed him at the end, he was there. He was already known for this. People forget that his first year with the Celtics, he and the team were both looking nice. The problems came once Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown found out how good they could be without other stars needing the ball, and then they all came back last season and that just was not a good situation for anybody. But so far we've seen that a majority of the time when things are right with the team, Kyrie can shine. So with how individually good he's been throughout the 2010s and what he's proved in the playoffs, I would have to put him second on this list. With the first pick in the 2012 NBA Draft, the New Orleans Hornets select Anthony Davis. Alright, so was AD a bit of a dick to his former teams with the that's all folks thing? Yeah, he was. Did things ever go good with the Pelicans? No, but it's not necessarily his fault. New Orleans tried to get him Cousins, Cousins tore his Achilles. That was like the only time he really had like a chance on that team really. He had a decent squad sometimes with Drew Holiday, but never a contending team. Regardless of anything, Anthony Davis is definitely the best player to be chosen first overall in the 2010. He's elite on both offense and defense, he has great size and he's quick and agile and he can shoot, so he literally lacks nothing as a big man. Out of all the first overall picks, he's the only player that's been in legitimate MVP talks. And I mean like semi-legitimate MVP talks. Of course he could never truly win it on the Pelicans because part of it is your team performance as well, but individually he's had seasons where they were MVP seasons. He is more than capable of winning Defensive Player of the Year, which is one of his goals going into his first season with the Los Angeles Lakers and LeBron James. So in short, he's getting the shot that a lot of these first overall picks need or needed. I said that Cat needs to be paired with a star somewhere so he can really show what he's about. John Wall needed that. Aiden needs a point guard. I think we're about to see something really special now. It's going to go from that point where he's just playing great basketball on teams that are going nowhere to maybe even that Kyrie situation where he hops right into the playoffs because so far we've only seen him there once or twice and he just dominates on the way to helping his team actually win. So far he averages 30 points and 12 rebounds throughout his playoff career. Of course he's run into the Warriors both times so there's not much you can really tell from it but he's been dominant so now the only thing left is for him to get deep into the playoffs and do that same thing but either way he already has the number one spot as the first overall pick and if you agree or disagree you can leave that in the comment section as well with the rest of your list make sure to hit the like button comment and sub if you enjoyed and hit the bell next to my name if you want notifications when the next 2010s list drops thanks for watching and i'll see you all on the next one